There we go. So today... First, first of all, maybe you can tell me your name. My name is Skip Taylor. I'm a member of Our Farm, Our Food. Mm -hmm. uh, I drink raw milk with my family. Mm -hmm. I've been drinking raw milk and I've been part of the farm since approximately 2008. Mm -hmm. And my parents are also members, my family, my sister, my brother, as well as my children, they're all members. Mm -hmm. We've been friends with Michael and Elisa for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now we can get to the part of what happened yesterday and today. Well, yesterday and today we went to the court in order to um, get standing to speak for ourselves. What this mm -hmm. means is that we wanted to have the right to speak of uh, our right and our interest in the farm and our rights as basic human rights to mm -hmm. drink raw milk mm -hmm. and the court has never allowed this to happen before so for us it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. uh, in essence um, what it means is is that the shift uh, has happened off of the farm and onto the drinkers of raw milk. That's what you need. Mm -hmm. So now the drinkers of raw milk can explain to the court why they want the right and why they enjoy the right. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different ways of expressing that. You know, mm -hmm. there's religion and there's spirituality, mm -hmm. there's health and medicine and, mm -hmm. you know, needing raw milk as a, as a form of, of medicine. There's traditions and culture that people, there's freedom of conscience which is an especially good one because freedom of conscience doesn't just deal with the past, it deals with the future and mm -hmm. our descendants to come that right. haven't even been born yet. Yeah, yeah. It also deals with um, our community, our freedom to assemble as a community and our basic right to food, our mm -hmm. basic right that we want as a community, private community, have the right to drink raw milk Mm -hmm. um, as the food that we want to consume. Yep. Now everybody knows, everybody knows that it's legal to drink raw milk. Everybody knows it's e equally legal to possess or to hold raw milk in your hand. It's not an illegal substance. What's illegal are all of these different mechanisms that have been put in place by the government to prevent us from doing so. Yeah. For example, they say they, they try and compartmentalize the farming industry. They say farmers only. They're only allowed to. Mm -hmm. They've put economic limitations on us. So for these reasons, you're not allowed to drink raw milk. Um, in fact, it's not true. Today marks the first day where the people can finally stand up for themselves and say, we have this right. We want to keep this right. Please don't infringe on our right. There was two other motions that came through today. The first was um, that the, um, the, the jurisdictions of York Region joined today with Simcoe County and with Peel Region and the Simcoe County Health Unit. Mm -hmm. they, were, they are all going to be against us now as opposed mm -hmm. to just York Region, mm -hmm. which is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but the interesting part about this is that it grows the case for public interest mm -hmm. when you move from beyond a small locality mm -hmm. with a small local group of aggrieved people like we are mm -hmm. and make it bigger, multi-jurisdictional, because mm -hmm. now we're not only speaking for this local group, we're speaking for Canadians. Right. Canadians want this right. Mm -hmm. And the other motion was actually, um, it was actually uh, moved to a different date. Um, later on. After all the argument about it, they decided to withdraw the motion until a later date. And what was and that, that was And that was a motion to convert our application, which is currently the proceeding that we're in, mm -hmm. into an action, which is more like a lawsuit right. with a jury trial. That's with, what Michael explained. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't finish today. That it was, it was withdrawn and it will be moved to a different date. So in other words, um, the, Michael explained yesterday on, on another video that uh, all these different things were happening. Uh, maybe you can say something about um, uh, Elisa and uh, Michael Schmidt, um, how they um, walked out on or withdrew the... Uh, I was exceptionally surprised that it happened. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that the court understood exactly what their point was. Mm -hmm. 
I believe that the court found their, I believe the court found their, their, their testimony, if you like, or their, their submissions just prior to them leaving. I think they found it very helpful and, com and passionate and sympathetic to our cause. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, um, well, I'm, just let me say it this way. I'm really proud of them for doing so. Yeah, they stood yeah. to their principles. That's they right. said to the court, you guys aren't listening to what we want as consumers, and we'd rather go to jail than endure this torture anymore. And yeah. they meant it. And it was, it was heart-wrenching to see how the court just dabbled away with the rest of its motions like nothing happened, yeah. when real lives are at stake here. Yeah. But I believe that our farm, our food, and me personally with our, um, with, with our community, we're going to be there to support them this time. So can you say a little bit more about the OFM? Our farm, our food is the very first Ontario cooperative to actually own a farm. We're the very first cooperative farm. Our farm, our food is designed a little bit like an Israeli kibbutz where the people own the farm. The government has a big problem with this because the traditional farm in Ontario is owned by one person or a family, mm -hmm. not a community. This is the first one. Mm -hmm. And we are seeking our privacy. We are mm -hmm. seeking our intent to lawful assembly. And we're seeking the right to drink raw milk. Mm -hmm. Even though, as a group, we don't have a common cause, like, for example, the Mennonite mm -hmm. uh, or Amish communities. Mm -hmm. We have our own uh, we have our own um, purpose, which is for the consumption of raw milk. Yeah. And, no, 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 it's not just drinking raw milk. It's also for sustainable, uh, rep reciprocal sustainability, yeah. supporting local farmers, yeah. getting, a, joining our, um, joining our uh, need for farming mm -hmm. with the with, where where we're all urbanites, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. that we can have that connection with nature. Mm -hmm. For all these reasons, also, but mm -hmm. but mostly, it's that corporately we have we have joined up as a community for a common purpose. And um, maybe you can say something about Arc. What's the difference between this and Arc? Prior to OFOF existing, Arc owned the farm. It also owned the cows. It also owned the dairy facilities at the farm. But sometime around the middle of 2014 through to late 2015, all of us realized the only difference between Glen Colton Farms and every other farm is that there's dairy facilities. And if we remove the dairy facilities out of ARC's control, it's just any older old farmstead mm -hmm. with horses and cows and that's mm -hmm. all it is. It's mm -hmm. got chickens. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. So we made ARC into a very similar homestead to the other 10,000 farms across Ontario. We took away the dairy facilities and now our farm, our food, was incorporated by the raw milk consumers to own those facilities. Uh -huh. Now we own them and we, and we pay for the hay and the grasses for the cows to to eat. We yeah. own the cows. Each one of you. We own the um, you we the own expenses. the gasoline that goes into the tractors. Yeah. And all that we do, we outsource all the work to the experienced farming skills of ARC. Mm -hmm. And they do some of the work for us and mm -hmm. they supervise the tending and the care of the cows. They supervise the milking of the of the milk and bottling the milk and keeping it cold for us. But as soon as that work is done, the members of our farm, our food, collect the bottled milk and we um, share it with our members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, um, this way, we are keeping ARC alive by helping pay for their labor in keeping the cows alive. Mm -hmm. And they keep us alive with mm -hmm. the food, the sustainably yeah. produced food. Mm -hmm. um, another way of putting it is that um, we are paying not for the food, but we're paying for the implements to the food. Mm -hmm. And this way, we're, we're getting access to the raw milk, and we're not paying for the raw milk as a final end product. There we're creating go. it. It's like a big, big yeah. loaf of bread. We, yeah. are putting, we put the eggs in, we put the flour in, yeah. we put the water yeah. in, we put everything in, we mix it together, and we throw it in the oven. And as a result of all that work and the purchase of the raw materials, we get the bread as a benefit, yeah. exclusively and privately for our own benefit. Wonderful. 
So uh, you are going to represent, and um, whichever way it is now, it's going to take time before the next something comes. Yeah, we have, I think it'll be about three months. Yeah. Three, four months, yeah. and that's all. And the longer it takes, the more people wake up. So that might be a good thing. Thank you so much for your time. Well, yeah. thank you for your time. Skip, did you yeah, say? Yeah, my name's Skip Wonderful. Taylor. All right. All Take right. care. You're welcome. Bye-bye.